Hello there, thrill seekers, and welcome to my channel where I talk to you about my 40, almost 40 year career of being a Zen Buddhist practitioner, a monk, and writer of many books about Zen Buddhism. I thought, I've noticed that other YouTube channels do that. They, they do a little intro where they tell you what the channel is about, and I guess like newcomers can see that and go, oh, I know what this channel is about. Anyway, I, I don't know if I'll do that every time. But I wanted to talk to you about Taoism and Zen, because I get this question a lot about the relationship between Taoism and Zen and whether I should study Taoism and all this other stuff. So back when I was a young whippersnapper and first started trying to explore what these various Eastern philosophies were about, one of the things that I knew in air quotes about Buddhism or about Zen Buddhism was that Zen Buddhism is a combination of Chinese Taoism and Indian Buddhism. And you don't see this particular fact, in, in air quotes, uh, repeated quite as often these days, although it does kind of still circulate out there. I think people are a bit more sophisticated. But I don't know where I got that idea. I might have gotten it from the Encyclopedia Britannica's entry on Buddhism or Zen Buddhism or something. I'm not sure. But it's not true. It's an oversimplified way of putting things, although you can say there are some influences or some similarities between the two philosophies. So I'd like to get into that a little bit today. And Dogen has a few things to say about Taoism and its relationship to Buddhism and, and Confucianism's relationship to Buddhism as well. And he says them in two essays which appear in book three and book four of Shobo Genzo, if you're looking at the Nishijima cross translation. And let's see, the most, the, the one that stands out in my mind the most uh, comes from this chapter, which is uh, Shoho Jiso, All Dharmas Are Real Form, and it is chapter 50 of Shobo Genzo, and as I say, it appears in book three three, so you can probably find other translations. But anyway, let's tell you what Dogen has to say about this here, and I'm just going to read it to you. Nevertheless, recent unreliable people in the great kingdom of Sung, that's China, not knowing a place to settle down and not seeing the place of treasure, treat the words real form as if they were empty elaboration. And so they go on to study the sayings of Lao Tzu, that's the guy who supposedly wrote the Tao Te Ching, which I'll talk about in a minute, the uh, most famous sort of literary work of Taoism, and Chung, Chung Tzu, which is another name for Confucius or Kung Fu Tse, I think is how you're supposed to say it now, uh, st who started Confucianism. Uh, they, they read those sayings of those people and say that these are the same as the great truth of the Buddhist patriarchs. Furthermore, they say that the three teachings, which is Buddhism, Taoism, and Confucianism, may be of one conclusion, or they say that the three teachings are like the three legs of a tripod which would overturn if even one were missing. There is nothing to use as an example of the enormity of their foolishness. <laughs> so he's saying, no way. We should not concede that people in whom such words are present have ever listened to the Buddha Dharma. Why? Because the origin of the Buddha Dharma is India in the West, for 80 years in the world and for 50 years of preaching the Dharma, the Buddha did his utmost to educate human beings and gods. He transformed all living beings and caused them to enter the Buddha's truth. Thereafter, the authentic transmission was received by the 28 patriarchs. We esteem this as the utmost subtle and fine and supreme, uh, supremely venerable. All kinds of non-Buddhist and celestial demons were completely defeated. Unknown numbers of human beings and gods realized Buddha and became patriarchs. But they never said that because they had not investigated Confucianism and Taoism in China, the Buddha's truth was insufficient for them. If the three teachings are inevitably of one conclusion, then when the Buddha Dharma manifested itself, Confucianism and Taoism should have manifested themselves in India at the same time. But the Buddha's Dharma is that in the heavens and under the heavens I alone am the world honored one etc etc and it sounds very uh, sectarian if you read it that way but that's uh, that's dogan's uh, one big statement on it and the other one appears in shizen biku 
the bhikshu of the fourth dhyana. Bhikshu is a monk, and dhyana is a level of meditation. And in here he says, he's talking about Shariputra, one of the Buddha's great disciples, and he says, If the world in the ten directions were full of the likes of Shariputra and the other disciples, and together they tried to fathom the Buddha's wisdom, it would be impossible. Uh, Kung Tzu, that's another way of pronouncing Confucius, and Lao Tzu, again, the, start, the founder of Taoism, have never had such virtue. Who among students of Buddha Dharma could fail to fathom Confucius and Lao Tzu? But no student of Kung Tzu and Lao Tzu has ever fathomed the Buddha Dharma. People today of the great kingdom of Sung, that's China, mostly uphold the principle of agreement between Kung Tzu and Lao Tzu and the Buddhist truth. This is the gravest of wrong views, as I shall later expand, etc., etc. And he, and he kind of goes on for why these are not the same thing in his own way, but let me see if I can tell you it in my way. So, in order to kind of prepare for this video, I read this book uh, over yesterday. It's a very short book. It is the uh, Dao De Ching of Lao Tzu, and this happens to be the translation by Stephen Addis and Stanley Lombardo, which was given to me by Stanley Lombardo himself, who is at the, uh, what is he, the University of Kansas? Yes, University of Kansas, and I met him in uh, St. Louis. No, not St. Louis. Kansas City, right? No. St. Louis. I think it was St. Louis. <laughs> One of those places out there in the Midwest uh, where he is married to the person who runs the St. Louis Zen Center, uh, which is a Korean uh, tradition Zen Center out there. So uh, I'm taking this version to be at least good enough for this video. I also, uh, while I was uh, at Goodwill yesterday, came across this uh, living, it's uh, Dr. Wayne Dyer, Living Wisdom of the Tao, um, this dude. Probably not the most reliable translation, but it was $3, so I picked it up to kind of look it over. And I don't see a, a, a a huge difference between the two. There, there are certainly different nuances, but this is much more scholarly than that. And uh, generally speaking, this is a this is a nice book. I I read a translation of the Tao Te Ching, which is, even though it's spelled Tao Te Ching, it's pronounced Tao Te Ching apparently. Uh, when I was very first starting to get into Zen, I had some other paperback version that was out at the time, and I read it and I liked it. And I can see why people talk about the similarities. And the, the similarities mostly come down to the use of two words. And one is the Tao itself, which is the way. And the Buddhists pick that up as meaning something like the way of Buddha. Uh, and here they talk about the way of the way is never really explained very thoroughly. And the other word that comes up a lot in the Tao Te Ching, which the Buddhists used when they translated Buddhism into Chinese, is mu, nothingness. And in the Tao, there's a lot of quotes about how the universe is a, the universe of forms we see around us comes from nothingness, which is quite similar to the idea of form is emptiness, emptiness is form. And as I was reading this yesterday, I put some quotes from it that I thought were kind of nice on my uh, Instagram. So I'll read off uh, some quotes from here. Um, I'm not sure what verse this is. If I find the verse number, I will put it on the screen, but here it is. Something unformed and complete before heaven and earth were born, solitary and silent, stands alone and unchanging, pervading all things without limit. It is like the mother of all under heaven. But I don't know its name. Better call it Tao. Better call it Great. Great means passing on. Passing on means going far. Going far means returning. Therefore, Tao is great, and heaven and earth and humans, four great things in the world, aren't humans one of them. Humans follow earth, earth follows heaven, heaven follows Tao, Tao follows its own nature. That was a nice uh, quote. Here's another one. This is verse 47. Uh, this was used as the basis for the Beatles song, The Inner Light. Without going out the door, know the world. Without peeping through the window, see heaven's Tao. The further you travel, the less you know. 
This is why the sage knows without knowing, identifies without looking, does without trying. And and uh, the, the Beatles version is, uh, without looking out of my door, I know all things on earth. Without looking out of my window, I know the ways of heaven. The farther one travels, the less one knows. Arrive without traveling. There's also a cool Beatles bootleg called uh, Arrive Without Traveling, which I used to have. And here's another verse, which uh, this is verse 57. The more prohibitions and rules the poorer people become, the sharper people's weapons, the more they riot, the more skilled their techniques, the more grotesque their law, their works, sorry, the more elaborate their laws, the more they commit crimes. Therefore, the sage says, I do nothing and people transform themselves. I enjoy serenity and people govern themselves. I cultivate emptiness. There's that moo uh, and people become prosperous. I have no desires and people simplify themselves. So those are three quotes I kind of liked that I found to be somewhat similar uh, to the Zen attitude towards things. But I think the similarity is not because Taoism influenced Zen and Zen picked up on it. I think it's because the mystical traditions of all religions are quite similar. You could look in the Christian mystical tradition, um, John Scotus Eugenia and St. John of the Cross and some people like that, and you also find similar sentiments to these. So I don't, I don't think it's a cross-fertilization between Buddhism and Taoism, but I think it's more because the Chinese, when they were trying to translate Buddhist texts into their own language. Chinese people and Indian people trying to translate Buddhism into Chinese picked up on words that were used in Taoism to to uh, to translate these things, but it doesn't always mean the same thing. One example somebody on the internet who I, I saw writing about this said was that you can think about it in terms of the way the word God is used in various religious traditions. God in the Jewish tradition doesn't necessarily mean the same thing as God in the Christian tradition or in the Islamic tradition, and certainly God in the Hindu tradition also has a different meaning. Same thing when you, you see words like Tao, the way, and Mu, nothingness or emptiness used between Buddhism and Taoism. They are similar concepts, but not quite exactly the same. But one of the ways that I think Buddhism, Zen Buddhism, was influenced by Taoism is in method, mode of expression, let's say that, not method. The Indian Buddhism is very elaborate. Some of the translations I have of books from Indian Buddhist sources are big, thick, you know, giant. I should have brought a couple out here to show you. But they, they tend to be very verbose, and they like to explain things, uh, attempting, I think, to get a, a very precise explanation by using as many words as possible to try to explain things. And in China, they tend to prefer shorter explanations. And so what happened in Buddhism as it came to China is that a lot of these longer, you know, very tedious to read giant sutras got summarized into very short forms. And so you have people speaking in aphorisms and, and short uh, expressions, which um, one example of in the modern day is uh, this book I just got uh, to you, Zen Sayings of Koto Sawaki. Koto Sawaki was uh, my uh, teacher, Gudo Nishijima Roshi's teacher, one of his teachers. And this book came out a few, well, this, this version came out recently, but it's various versions that have been floating around on the internet and here and there for a while. And it explains Buddhism in, in just short, sometimes single sentences or just uh, tiny paragraphs. These are taken from the notes of Kosho Uchiyama, who was listening to Kodo Sawaki's lectures. So this isn't really Kodo Sawaki's invention himself, but it's a kind of typical thing that was done in Chinese Buddhism and later in Japanese Buddhism, is to try to make the teachings really, really short, sort of bite-sized teachings rather than these giant, giant, long tomes that you would have to spend days and months and years reading. And so in, in that sense, uh, Taoism influenced, well, I don't know if it's Taoism, but Taoism was probably picking up the same sort of cultural trope. I don't know if trope is the word, but the same sort of way that the Chinese culture likes to make things in, in short 
you know, easy to understand little packages rather than long treatises. I, I mean, I know they exist in Chinese philosophy too, but they, that's one of the things Zen picked up on. And just finally, uh, people have asked me this kind of question, like, should somebody who's studying Zen study Taoism too? Well, Taoism is a whole thing. So if you get in, so there's the Tao Te Ching, the book, the little short, thin book, and then there's Taoism, and Taoism is a whole thing which, which involves a lot of um, divination is one of the things they do, the I Ching, you know, throwing the little sticks and stuff, uh, visualization, these kind of practices, the, the whole philosophy of yin and yang, that is part of uh, Taoism as a, as a bigger thing, but mo none of that appears in the Tao Te Ching. Uh, it's it's a much earlier piece of writing and and I like it uh, I think it's nice to read I don't think it's got you know the answer in it no book does but it, it's it's useful to to know what's in this book I, I think there's no harm in that whether it's necessary or not I, I don't think it's really necessary to know a whole lot about Taoism if you want to study Zen because they're they're two separate sort of things and I've gone on long enough. I hope I have explained something. I don't know if I have or not. I took a lot of notes and said a lot of things, but I'm not sure if I really got to the point or not. But you can tell me in the comments below if I did, and if you want me to try to clarify things, please let me know. Also, if you want to support me, you can go to the URL you are seeing on the screen below, which is hardcorezen.info slash donate. That is hardcorezen.info slash donate. There you will find links to my PayPal and Patreon accounts. Those are my main and usually only ways of making a living, and I appreciate your support. I got a new book coming out in about a month, so uh, look for that. It's called The Other Side of Nothing. You can pre-order it if you want to do that on all the uh, various sites where you pre-order books. Uh, so get that, and have a good time all the time, and we'll see you later. And you don't have to donate if you don't want to donate. Did I say that? I can't remember. Anyway, we'll see you later. Have a good time all the time. Bye. Hey, Ziggy. What do you think of Taoism? Hmm? Here. What do you think of this Taoist book? Does it smell good? So Taoism is, is good, but you don't want to eat it. Okay. See you later, Ziggy.